name is Benjamin Tyson. I want to tell you just a little bit where I'm coming from. I lost 92 pounds. I used a system that I created based on things that I read and advice that I got from people. And in the end, I had to do my own thing. And that's one thing that I, I learned is that if you want to achieve your own goal, you're going to have to do it your way. Because nobody else is going to be there to say, hey, don't go through that drive through No one else is going to be there to say all the little things that you have to do along the way. So if you want change for yourself, then you must change for yourself. That's one of the things I learned. Um, in the process, I wrote a book. So, um, so the main thing that I do is help people achieve a goal. I'm a board certified behavior analyst and what that means is when someone has some kind of issue, they want to do something in their lives, they want to get to a certain place, then there's some problems, something blocking them from getting there. So what I do is help them figure out what's blocking them and how they can get through it. But in the end, they're going to have to do a little bit of work to get there. If you want something big, you have to get some work done in order to get it. You can't just get it for free. That would be too easy. Then you'd be like Drake. He doesn't do anything and Dr. Drake cuts him a check for $10,000, he doesn't even do anything. But the world isn't really like that, it's just something unusual. What I want to know is, what do people here want to achieve? Open your own business, make money, lose weight. Okay, is that, is that correct? We, everyone here wants to open their own businesses, lose weight, everyone wants to lose weight? Alright, not everybody here needs to lose weight, but does everyone want to? <laughs> All right, so you want to be healthier overall, right? Okay, okay. So you want to make money, you want to spend it, or do you want to keep it? What do you want to do with money? Spend it. <laughs> you want to have money to spend, but you want to have extra money so you don't have to stop spending it? I'll teach you a little goal system, and this one's a lot of fun. It's very visual, and, and if you're artists like you are and entrepreneurs, then you have to be creative. You have to be visual. You have to be able to see what it is that you want to accomplish. All right, first thing, I want you to write down a long-term goal, what you want to achieve in two years, two years from now. What do you want to see yourself doing in two years that's going to make you say, I'm awesome, and I love myself, I'm awesome. What is it in two years that makes you say that? And really see it, visualize it in your mind. What does it look like? And just, you don't have to write a whole bunch, you can just draw or maybe write a couple words explaining what that is. Maybe you opened your own business, maybe you graduated, maybe you paid off debt, maybe you bought a Camaro, whatever it was. The only limit is you. You get to decide how many things you write, but you also get to decide how many things you achieve. Now I want you to dream a little bit, dream a little bit, and gaze into that crystal ball into the future. Look at five years, five years from now. Imagine what you could do in five years. And write that one down too. What, what have I done? What are all the things that I've accomplished? And what's my dream? What do I want to do? What can you do today to help you get to that goal? What can you do today, right now? Or maybe not right now, but today, right now. So we're going to look at how you can get to those goals all the time. And in order to do it, you need to have some kind of system in your mind. So you keep it with you, because you might leave your wallet, you might leave your phone sometime, might run out of battery. So you always want to have a system you can keep in your brain. So you always know what you're doing all the time. Very, very important. So for us, what we're going to do, we're going to have a system called ROADS. Okay, so you're going to get to your goal by following roads, just like you would in a car. And there's four roads. The first one is the highway. And I'm not talking about the 405 when it's jammed. I'm talking about the, four, the, the 405 when it's not jammed, when you can go fast on the highway. That's the fastest road you can take. So the highway is going to be your perfect behavior, perfect what you're doing so you can get to your goal. That's the highway. Then the second one is the road. You can drive maybe 40 miles an hour like you're going up Winnetka. It's not a freeway, but you can drive pretty quickly on it. That's your second best way to go. That's very good behavior, good things you're doing to get to your goal. That's the road. The third one is the dirt road. Not a good way to get where you want to go. It's possible, but it's unlikely you'll get there very quickly and it might cause you a lot of problems. 
What's the first thing you say when you're driving and you're on a dirt road? If you've been driving on a, on a paved road and all of a sudden you're on a dirt road and you're looking for something, what's the first thing everybody says? You're like, Damn. it's a dirt road, I must be going the wrong way. And I want you to think that too. As soon as you realize you're on a dirt road, you're probably going the wrong way. So you want to find another road, and then maybe if you can find a road, then you want to really get on that highway. So that's the third one. Which one's the best? Highway. All right. Now I'm going to tell you about the fourth one. The fourth one is the parking lot. <laughs> if you're in the parking lot, you're not making much progress to your goal. I mean, take a picture in your mind. So you want to have that mental picture. So for you, the best thing you want to do for your goals is try to figure out, okay, what's the highway for me to get to this goal? And the answer is going to be something you can do. Not something you can think or want, but something you can actually do with your body. That's what you want to do right now. So we're going to go one by one, and we're going to write down something that you can do. And two or maybe three things that you can do to put you on the highway. So visualize. And it's going to depend on what your goal is. It's not going to be the same for the person next to you. So to get to the goal, maybe write a business plan mm -hmm. and look for a location. That would be a start. Yeah. If, you're, if your goal... How many people wrote down a goal of opening a business? Perfect, perfect. Okay, so if you want to open a business, then there's some steps you need to take. Number one, you got to figure out what's the business for. What is it you're specializing in? So figuring that out and then learning about that industry, learning from people who are also experts, those are ways to do it. Those will put you on the road, they'll put you on the highway. Coming up with a business plan, writing that out, that'll really help you go step by step. Having a blueprint and then talking to somebody who's been there and they can sit down with you and they can say, this looks like it would work, hey, did you think about this part? Talking to an accountant, making sure you get the licensing, all of that stuff. How are you handling the advertising? So many details to consider. So if you're focused on getting to that business plan, then anything you do related to it is putting you either on the road or the highway. But if you want to open a business, and the way you're doing it is by going out with your friends and having a few drinks and wondering, you know, I don't know if I can really do this, how's it going to happen, then you're in the dirt road or you might be in the parking lot. So always want to know, what am I doing right now? Is this helping me meet my goal? Is this really going to help me get where I want to go? Always asking yourself that question. Can you tell us your, your story, your highway, your road? Well, my uh, long-term goal mm -hmm. is to be like Tony Robbins. That's what I want to do. Do you know who Tony Robbins is? Mm -hmm. he's, um, he's this guy who's a results coach. And he helps people one-on-one -on -one to get amazing results. He coaches people like Chuck Liddell, the Iceman. UFC fighter, uh, business executives that make all kinds of money uh, for Fortune 500 companies. That's what he does. And he's not necessarily better than anybody else at, at what their skill or their profession is. But by studying the process of success and how people do things, he can really help people achieve amazing goals. That's what I'm after. That's my, my long-term goal. So what puts me on the highway is going out to workshops, talking to people. That helps me practice to get to know what it is that makes people succeed and what it is that makes people to stay motivated. So being here right now, I'm on the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, what else I can do to be on the highway is I, I can go um, and send emails to people that are guest bloggers and bloggers and people who run magazines and people who know Tony Robbins and people who work with the coaching industry and network that way. I can do that with the goal in mind that, hey, I'm looking for speaking opportunities and ways to do it, and you don't have to pay me, I'll go. See, that, that puts me on the highway. The road is doing less of that or doing it without as much intensity. For a website up or having a book that's published, that was a big one for me was having a book. So I worked really hard to get that book done because I knew once I had that, it was a big first step because for what I'm doing, if you don't have a book, then no one will take you very seriously. It's more important than you know, going to, uh, to school and getting a master's degree which I did, but it didn't really help me with, with this. So that, that's what's helping me. Uh, dirt road, I love doing Kung Fu and Qigong, but if I spend the day doing that, that's, that's dirt road. That's, that's parking lot kind of stuff for me. You know, so discouraging myself, saying, I really want to do this, but it's hard, and I don't know if I can. I don't think I can really do it. It doesn't seem like something I can do. That's, that's the parking lot for me, so I try to stay away from that. And, and my, one of my rules for myself is to believe in myself.
Oh, um, I consider myself to be an artist of whatever comes out of my heart. So I, on my card it says that I'm a artist. Oh, I thought you were. No worries. That. You're right. The, the phonetic sound. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It says here, it's, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, so I consider myself to be a artist because I do so many different things. But essentially I'm a coach, like a life coach. It's probably the easiest way to think about it. Uh, my book sells online for $24. And you have to pay $5 shipping, or you can buy an ebook for $8.99. Anything holding you back in life, anything that's telling you, I can't do it, anything that needs to be clean so you can have a fresh space and you can go and succeed and live out your dreams, anything that you need to do that, you can find it in this book. And it's a power up. When you read it, it's really uplifting. It'll encourage you, it'll inspire you, and motivate you. You'll feel like you can do this, and you can, and you really can, because the only thing stopping you is you. You have to be a little bit systematic about it, but at the end of the day, the only thing stopping you from living your dreams is you. You know what Oprah says about that, right? The big secret in life? There's no secret. You can do anything you want. That's what Oprah says. She's right, because she's Oprah. And it's true, though. When you get down to it, if you don't believe in yourself, that's the number one problem. You've got to do that. You've got to believe in yourself. Because you've got a song in here. There's a party going on right in here. And, it, and you're invited. You can go to the party anytime you want, and you can show everybody else how cool this party is. And that's up to you. Well, you can find out how to do that in my book, but the other thing you can learn in there is how to lose weight, and how to do it for the rest of your life. It's easy to lose weight. I don't want to rattle off too many statistics, but just so you know where I'm coming from, I learned that weight loss is a $61 billion industry, and I spent a couple hours trying to visualize how much money that is, and I, I figured out that I wouldn't even be able to spend that in my whole life. I don't care how many Maybachs and how many garages I, I put on my mansion, I don't think I can spend $61 billion and I don't think anybody else in here can do it single-handedly. I don't think you, you there's, it doesn't matter how much time you spend at Nordstrom, it's not going to happen. 95% of people that lose weight, they lose 40 pounds or more, they gain it back within five years. That's crazy. And, and I, part of my belief is that you know, these big companies, they're smart. They're not stupid, they're smart. So they know how to help you lose a little bit of weight, but then kind of doesn't really work that well, so you gotta buy more stuff and lose a little bit more weight. So they get the repeat customers, right? Everybody knows it's easier to, when, you, when you're a stylist too, you should know, business 101, right? I have an MBA, so I'll tell you just briefly, but when you have your, your new customers, it takes about three times the resources to get a new customer as it does to keep a customer. That's why when you get somebody in your chair and you're helping them out, you've got to make sure they're happy. You've got to take really good care of those people. Very, very important. Because it's so much easier to keep the ones you already have and it's harder to find the new ones. But businesses know that too. They know they want to keep people in the program. So my whole thing is I want people to get out of the program so you can do things that will work just for you so you'll have the body that you want and you'll have the help you want without having to rely on programs or making someone else cook your food for you, doing like Nutrisystems and Weight Watchers and stuff like that. So it's not necessary. You can do it, but it's not necessary. You do those things to relax your body um, so that you can make decisions with food, you can make good decisions about what you eat and drink, it can help people that have addictions, and it's really, really good for exercise programs, building up small steps so that you're exercising in ways you enjoy, so you want to keep doing it. Because if you don't like it, you'll stop. If it's too hard, it's not going to work because if you bite off more than you can chew, it's going to put you on the dirt road. And at the end of the day, when you come back and you try to say, well, how come my exercise plan didn't work? Or you say, oh, I should go back to the gym because when I was going to the gym, I was training like an MMA fighter and I was in really good shape. Well, that's fine, but if it's not your job to be an MMA fighter, you don't really need to train like an MMA fighter. So you just want to train like you. What, what it's going to be that's going to work for you? What's the diet that's going to help you? What's going to make you feel good about you? And just by being practical and following some simple steps to know what's good and what's not good for you, then you can come up with a perfect plan. And that's going to be just for you and just your life. But once you get your body into a place where you're happy with it and you're comfortable and you can maintain it, that's when you can start focusing on all kinds of other stuff too. But really step one is taking care of your body. Step one is, is getting your body where you want it to be. Here, you know you're taking care of yourself and respecting yourself. You know, like every time you look at your job, 
when you're taking care of that, you're honoring that, you're working hard, then you see yourself at work, you see yourself here at school, and you say, you know what, I'm working hard. And it gives you a boost. You feel good about yourself because you're doing what you need to do. So those are the things that, that really make a difference in life. And, um, and I put a two-year workbook in the book as well, um, just because I really want people to know if you go step by step and you, you listen to your own story, you can really inspire yourself to do amazing things. So um, that also has data sheets where you can track every week what you do to eat, what you do to exercise. And I didn't talk about it much yet, but one of the main focuses in the book is about stress, about how to relax. Because so much uh, of life is about accumulating stress. And we just kind of add it up and we get this wear and tear on our bodies. And we end up being really revved up and stressed out. We don't even realize it. So we think we're fine because we, we can just do what everybody else does, which is call a friend and complain about it. Or just be like, ah, and throw out some profanity. Or drink, drink an alcohol drink and just party it up and forget about it. But when's the time that we stop and even take 10 minutes and just take deep breaths and relax? and feel calm. And that's something that needs to happen every day, otherwise we just accumulate more and more stress. If it's not feeling any stress in life, let me know. <laughs> uh, okay, what's your secret? I took five years off. Excellent. Five years off. All right, now everybody in this room, if you can take five years off right now, raise your hand. Okay, I felt the stress right there. <laughs> but it's true. If you can take five years off, it's a real gift. Not too many people have that gift, have a choice. In, unless they're like seven years old. Have a choice. What's that? I didn't have a choice. Do you want to share your story? I was stressed. Mm. I what was happened? Dying. You were dying? Well, literally, yeah. Wow. Do you, <laughs> want, the doctor do you want to tell I, more I, about I, it? I had the cure, and I didn't know it. I had, I had to slow down. What was the cure for you? Take time off. Excellent. That's exactly what I'm talking about in the book, too taking that time to relax, taking that time to take care of you. Because you're not going to have infinite energy. you got to recharge your battery. If you don't, you start having problems with heart disease, you can start gaining weight, you can get pre-diabetic, all kinds of bad things can happen, high blood pressure. And that's just the start. But it, but it really comes down to deciding, okay, is it gonna, am I going to take care of myself today or not? And it doesn't have to be more complicated. You said, so you said stress. To make you oh yeah. How? It's how you respond to it. If you ignore stress, you're going to end up with more stress. It's just going to come back. So then your body will accumulate more and more stress. It'll bring you, eventually, you'll have this discomfort. And things aren't going to be in harmony with your life, so you'll have disharmony. Okay? And that leads to disorder and dis-ease. But it's about how you deal with the stress. If you deal with stress by taking 10 minutes a day and taking really deep breaths and centering yourself, you're going to be okay. But if you deal with stress by getting upset and thinking that's just how it is, or ignoring it and saying I just have to press on, or having more coffee, whatever it is, those are ways to deal with stress that aren't constructive. You're going to just have more stress. Because it's not going to go away unless you clean it. But the book shows you some ways to clean it. Okay. It's like if you have a bunch of clothes piled up, you need to get them out of the way so you can make room for more furniture or to clean the place up. We always have to clean. We're always cleaning. This world is so messy. We always have to clean it up. And you'll see with every client you get, there's some level of cleaning you have to do. Maybe it's washing hair. Maybe it's going to be working on the, the cuticles. And um, there's so many different things you need to do, even just to trim split ends where everybody needs that fresh start, even if it's something small. We all need a fresh start. We all do. So it's what you do with stress. It's what you do when life throws you curveballs, because life's always changing. Nothing's holding still, nothing's the same. Everything's changing all the time. Even, it's hard to think about, but even the planet, I mean, we're going at like 400 miles an hour right now, but it feels like we're standing still, right? But we're not. We're all flying through space. But nothing's holding still, everything's changing all the time. So it's about adapting to that, what we can do with that. When did you start going to your road? Um, I've pretty much been interested in this since as young as I can remember. My whole thing was just trying to get people motivated because I knew that I could help people do more. And I've always been excited about that. That's what just gets me jumping up and down with excitement when I wake up. 
and I say, like, I know I can help people out. So now I've got an opportunity where I'm helping people as a life coach, and they're able to live their dreams, and it just makes me laugh with excitement. I'm so happy, and I'm, I'm cheering them on. And I didn't really think that was a job growing up, so I tried to find jobs. But at one point, I just decided I had to do it anyway, even if it wasn't a job, and it worked. What's How that? did you gain and lose 92 pounds? Well, I gained 92 pounds, um, but I lost 67 pounds in college and 92 pounds after college. That's how I, I know I'm pretty good at gaining and losing weight. I can turn it on and turn it off like a switch. To gain weight, um, I drank beer, I ate Ooh. McDonald's, oh, yeah, <laughs> hey, I drank, um, I drank soda, um, I ate four fast food meals a day, I ate microwave pizza for breakfast, but I would eat the whole pizza for breakfast. <laughs> and I Chase that down with a couple of those little peanut butter sandwich things. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, the frozen yeah. ones? Yeah. Real good. <laughs> yeah, so let's take, take two of the smuckers, two, throw a couple of that, those bad boys in the car, eat those on the way to work. Was this stress related? You were I was stressed? stressed out in my life. Uh, I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't living my life. I was living the life that I thought I should live. And um, all those things together put me into a situation to become a very miserable and obese person. And I wasn't proud of myself. And when I looked in the mirror, I was like, what the hell happened to you? Right. You could have done so much. You didn't do it. I you know, you're so cute. Yeah, I was like, well, <laughs> nobody, nobody says you're cute anymore. When you were a little kid, you were adorable. And now you're big and old and everyone thinks you're nasty. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Smelling like french fries when you sweat. Oh, no. <laughs> but what can you do? So, uh, so I had to look at myself. And I looked at my, my head. I was bald. I had shaved my head. And I had this, like, I thought it was cool at the time, this little, like, soul patch in the middle. Like the, like the Orange County, like, like this, I'm, I'm from Orange County, kind of the soul patch, you know? Yeah, so I, I got that little thing. But, yeah, I had that thing going on, and, and my mom was like, oh, you look just like Pitbull, you're going to be a star. So, uh, I don't think that's the case, you know? It's like a really big Pitbull. But, you know, it, it, that was my life. That's where I was at. And, um... And that was easy to change <laughs> because, and I was also doing karaoke. Instead of talking to people, and I was a musician, but I gave up on the music. So instead of doing all that, I just uh, went to karaoke bars like five nights a week. I'm not making this up. And I used to go, it gets worse, it gets worse. Like, as if going to a karaoke bar five nights a week for two years. You can actually go, go beyond that. Okay, so what I did is I would enter karaoke competitions, and I don't sing. I can't sing to save my life. So I would always be a white boy rapper. Oh. So I actually won two contests for Baby Got Back oh. when I was obese. Why is that the goatee? And I incorporated because it's easy. It's the goatee for white guys. Yeah. And then the intro too, where you can be like, oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. And everybody's like, ooh, this is gonna be funny, and they love it. And it is, you know, you get a big guy up there talking about, I like big butts and I cannot lie. You know, these other brothers can't deny, and people are just like, yeah, it's right on. And none of us can relate to it, but we're just like, yeah, it's gotta be. That's it. And, but I kept winning, so I kept doing it. You know, that was like, that was my excitement in life. You know, so instead of, instead of taking the, the road to wanting to help inspire people to change their lives, I was, I was on the uh, dirt road, really busy, eating all kinds of fried food and doing all that stuff and, and proclaiming a, about how everyone should love those juicy doubles. And, and that was a totally different path. And that, I changed that. What made you change? What, what said stop? Well, one day I looked in the mirror and I just talked to my best friend in the world and I told him, I feel like I'm in love with this woman. She doesn't really want anything to do with me because she's like really attractive and dude, look at me. <laughs> and that was the reality. And I was saying, you know, I don't think this is, is even possible. And uh, I was looking at my, my dating profile that wasn't really getting a lot of responses back. And I was thinking, I, I can really do better than this. I can move on in life and I think I can close this chapter because there's, there's a part of me that I'm not being, and I want to get to know that person that I could be. So I did everything in my power 
to become the person that I dreamed I could be. So I know it's possible. If you really believe in yourself, even if you're not where you want to be yet, you believe you can get to where you want to go, and you can feel that and know who that person is, you can get there. It takes small steps, it takes commitment, but you can really do it. And for me, I did it without dieting consciously. I just ate less food because I really just lost my appetite to get out there and do more. And I wasn't exercising, but I lost all this weight. I was basically just drinking water and having fruits and vegetables and eating enough food and just kind of calming down. So in about a year of calming my body down, I lost 92 pounds. That's all it really took. You can do almost anything. But I had to be completely ready emotionally and internally to say, this ends, I'm cleaning that, and I'm going to go a different direction. And once I made that decision, everything changed for me. So did you get the girl? Yeah, I did. Woo! Yeah. But I lost her. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, things happen, right? We were probably just better friends anyway. I mean, we tried to be lovers, and it, it was like going in different directions. Go ahead. And now you have a new girl in your Yes, I do. I have a new girl now. We're so much alike, and we have all these things in common that last time I didn't get, that I really wanted someone who could see me for the things that, that I really wanted to see. But my ex-girlfriend, she didn't see things that way. And we went in different directions. But yeah, now I have a new girlfriend, and uh, she's beautiful, and she lives in Chicago, and I'm moving there pretty soon. I'm really excited about that. And um, thank you. Thank you for remembering that. She charged for coaching. For I charge $111 an hour. $100 an hour? No, $111 an hour. 111. 111. I like the resonance. So people buy three sessions, 333. Nobody's bought six sessions. Some people buy five. <laughs> do you do like a long distance coaching? I do most of it over the phone. Most of the coaching I do is on Skype. So what are your strengths? Is it, is it motivation, business building, goal building, weight loss? Number one thing that I do is help you overcome whatever's holding you back and get to the next level. Uh, I'm your friend, I'm your coach, I can help you to overcome anything, even if I'm not a true expert on cosmetology, because I don't really know much about it. So I can still help you to become the best that you can be to be the best you, to feel the best about your life. I have an MBA, so when it comes to the business side and making sure that you've got all your finances in check, I'm very, very good with all of that stuff. And when it comes to things that are practical, like what's going on in your life that can help you change so that you don't end up in the same problems, I'm an expert on changing what's going on around you, so even if you don't change at all, the outcome will change. Because you don't have to change what you're doing to get a different result if you can change everything else going on around you. That's my expertise. That's with behavior analysis. That's a really fun skill. They always say they're happier, they feel more themselves than ever, and they get along much better with everybody else. Those are the top three. I look at things like the technical stuff is really the masculine aspect of our society. That's your, your business. That's your, your money, your numbers, your accountant, that's your location, all that kind of stuff. That's really the masculine aspect of, of your business. But then there's the feminine aspect, which is creating and feeling really good about what you're doing, taking yourself to the next level, transforming your life when you're transforming other people's lives through cosmetology. All these things that you can do, but really you want to put both together. Really want to put both together. And make sure you're, you're being healthy and living a good life you're happy about. And does everybody feel good about what we talked about today with the roads. Yes. yes. Excellent. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it.